It's time for the force of law, not the law of force, was the main message of Polish President Andrzej Duda's speech at the United Nations General Assembly. World conflicts, including the war in Ukraine, once again dominated the talks in New York. But the topic of support for Kiev is also an important element of the presidential election campaign in the United States. The eyes of the world are on New York this week. This is where leaders from more than 190 countries are discussing key global challenges. We cannot allow this war to turn into another frozen, frozen conflict. This is the most important task for the future. That is why it's so important today to stop the Russian war in Ukraine. U.S. President Joe Biden warned against cutting aid to Kiev. We cannot grow weary. We cannot look away, and we will not let up on our support for Ukraine. Not until Ukraine wins a just and durable peace. Meanwhile, in New York, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky discussed the possibility of making peace. The war in Ukraine is also an election campaign topic overseas. At his rallies, Republican candidate Donald Trump regularly speaks about his plan to end this conflict. A Putin. On cały czas myśla o Ukrainie, ale gdy miał prezydentem, on by nigdy się nie odważył najechać. The campaign in America is entering its final, hottest and most important phase. Nationwide, Kamala Harris has a slight lead within the margin of statistical error. But in the so-called swing states, the situation is already volatile. In the swing states, sometimes 1.2 percent decides who takes all the electoral votes votes in the U.S. system. Therefore, a small group can exaggerate the result, and polls in these states are from a few to even 10 percent. Candidates of both parties have begun the battle for the hearts and minds of Polish Americans. Vice President Kamala Harris, in a recent TV debate, criticized Trump for his foreign policy. Last Sunday, as Polish President Andrzej Duda unveiled a monument to solidarity heroes in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, called America's Częstochowa, Donald Trump took to social media to write, This is a wonderful day for our amazing Polish-American community. My great friend, Polish President Andrzej Duda, is at the National Shrine of Our Lady of Częstochowa in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, to honor and remember the brave heroes who fought for Poland's independence after World War II. It was the incredible example of Polish heroes throughout history that inspired the closing words of my speech to the courageous Polish people on July 6, 2017. So together, let us all fight like the Poles, for family, for freedom, for the country, and for God. But Kamala Harris's staff and supporters say that they are the ones who have won the support of Polish Americans in Pennsylvania, one of the most important states during this election. Kamala Harris has just received the endorsement of the Polish community in Pennsylvania. There are more than 800,000 Polish Pennsylvanians, so this is a huge endorsement. The words came as a huge surprise to influential commentator Jack Posobiec. I have been a Polish American from Pennsylvania my entire life. My entire family are Polish Americans, and none of us are voting for you. Definitely more Polish Americans, including I, are voting for Trump. But you can't downplay those Polish Americans who are supporting him. Harris. One thing is certain, every vote cast in this election by Polish Americans is an increase in the strength and importance of the Polish American community. For the past 12 days, counting from Saturday, Poland has been battling flooding. The great surge has already passed through the southwestern part of our country. For the moment, the situation seems stable, but the first days of the flood were tragic in their consequences. The estimate of losses and the great cleanup after the flood is underway. The needs of the flood victims are now enormous. Aid is flowing to them from ordinary people. Londex Droy was nearly completely destroyed by the flood. The landscape after the flood, the water destroyed everything in its path. Residents in the flooded area are not giving up hope that they will be able to rebuild what the flood destroyed. People are coming from all over Poland on a volunteer basis to bring aid to those affected. We are cleaning up, helping everyone. As they must come back to something, one must help out. People lost their homes, everything they had. We came together on the internet. We decided to help those who are most in need. 
We came with a team of 30 people. We brought a lot of donations. People are in a terrible mental state. There is even a need for someone to talk to them. Soldiers also joined the action, helping on the ground and from the air. We also performed reconnaissance of losses, possible threats. We made flights with aid, carrying water and food. Military aviation is known to be prepared to fight the enemy. After the floods that ravaged many cities, tourism businesses found themselves in a difficult situation. We need literally everything. We have nothing. The water took everything. Houses need to be put up again, and it's necessary to support all tourism. Londex Droy, until recently one of the most beautiful towns in the Lower Silesian province, was visited by thousands of visitors and tourists every year. After the floods, the town is almost completely destroyed. The water took everything. Everything was flooded, the gate was demolished, all the furniture, everything had to be thrown away, washing machines, refrigerators. Destroyed floors, plaster falling off the walls, damaged benches, chairs and electronic equipment. This is what the school in Londek Zdroj looks like after the flood. The first thing will be to scrape the walls where it was flooded. The second is disinfection, which is necessary to begin further work, then drying the walls. And we go in with the renovation of the application of plaster and further action. Ewentualnie jeszcze wyozonować, no i już wchodzimy wtedy z remontowaniem, czyli nakładaniem tynków i kolejnymi działaniami. The list of things needed to rebuild the school is long and the losses are in the millions. Meble i bardzo dużo różnych sprzętów biurowych, szkoły. Furniture, a lot of office supplies, books. Unfortunately, all the electronics, all the computer rooms, laptops, that's no longer there. Cała serwerownia. Laptopy, tablice multimedialne, tego już nie ma. Poles rushed to help. Through the Republica Foundation, our viewers also contributed funds to rebuild the school in Londek Zdroj. When the tragedy struck, many people, including our viewers, decided to redirect those contributions that you give them on a daily basis and appeal for donations for those who need it most. Today, some of the most needy are the children who lost their schools in kindergarten. And we want to rebuild one of the schools with your donation. Republica will hand over a check for the reconstruction of the school in Londex Droy tomorrow. It would not have been possible without your help. An unbelievable scandal involving a German politician. An AFD member of the Saxon parliament allegedly benefited from the work of political prisoners of Alexander Lukashenko. This is according to the information reported by the independent Belarusian media. Alternative for Germany politician Jörg Dornau has been in the Saxon parliament since 2019. Thanks to his contacts with the regime in Minsk, he registered a company for onion production in 2020 in one of the villages near Lida in Belarus, together with Yuri Kunitsky, a Belarusian. That was when there were massive anti-government protests following Alexander Lukashenko's rigging of the presidential election. The independent Belarusian portal, Reform.News, reports that Dornau's company used the labour of political prisoners who had been jailed for criticizing the dictator. It is known that this company signed a contract with the Leader Center for Rehabilitation of Offenders. That's what it's called. It's a prison center to use these people. Belarusian journalists managed to reach one of the political prisoners sent to work sorting onions at the German politician's company. According to the employee's account, conditions at the plant were scandalous. The prisoners received their first meal at 7 a.m. They did not have access to food or water until 8 p.m. They received about five euros a day for their work. However, the money did not go into the pockets of the workers, but directly to the upkeep of the detention center. Their payment each day was decided at the discretion of the foreman. It was a terrible basement. Our arms and legs were freezing. The man reached by Belarusian journalists was detained in February this year for liking an anti-government post on social media. Since 2020, the Belarusian dictator has put thousands of people associated with the opposition in prison. Among them were many Poles. It was from their labor that Dornau allegedly profited and grew vegetables at almost no cost. According to the employee's account, the German politician personally supervised the work at his plant near Lida at least once.
I even saw him, a tall, bald man. Once he came in his car with the German registration, he entered the room where the hired workers and I were sorting onions. A German politician profiting from the near slave labor of Slavs evokes the worst possible historical associations. Asked about the case, an AFD spokesman replied that everyone is entitled to the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. It is known that the case is being investigated by the Parliament of Saxony. The Saxon State Parliament is aware of the investigation by the medium Reform.News. The administration of the State Parliament is investigating to what extent there may have been a violation of parliamentary law, the rules of procedure and rules of conduct for members of the State Parliament or similar parliamentary rules. One German lawyer has already referred the case to the prosecutor's office. I have filed a criminal complaint in connection with this incident. If the premise given by the Belarusian newspaper is confirmed, it will clearly be a case of exploitation of vulnerable people. Saxon law does not prohibit deputies from conducting business. However, Jörg Dornau was fined more than 20,000 euros by the Saxon parliament in August for concealing information about his company in Belarus. If the reports of his use of political prisoners are confirmed, he could face a much harsher penalty.